What? Go ahead and say I told you so. Just go ahead and start with that. Oh, you want me to start with that? Sure, go ahead. Oh, my God. Mm. Well, people get mad when I start AEW reports with a negative. I know. But you brought it up. Well. I absolutely, 100%, word for word, told you guys exactly what was going to happen with Tony Storm. Mm. And, uh, and uh, what's her name? You can, now you can't even remember her name, can you? Yeah. Serena Deeb. Serena Deeb. Yeah, you know what, though, Brian? You know what, though? If you if you would have saw the shot that the camera guy focused in on when that baby face came out that said Tony Storm was greater than Serena Dweeb, yep. you might think her name was Dweeb. Yeah. That's what she looked like, I told you guys. I told you guys she was a baby face. First off, I told you guys that Serena was a baby face, and you all made fun of me. I saw it in the chat. Oh, she's a baby face because she gave a card to a kid? Oh, she's a baby face just because she... Yeah, she's a baby face, okay? She came out as a total baby face here. Mm -hmm, like a lamb to slaughter here. And and the crowd does not care about Serena Deeb as a baby face facing Tony Storm. And she tries to cut her promo, and they're chanting for the Oilers. They're chanting for Tony Storm. She's telling a story about how she was gone for, I forget what she said, 14 months or whatever. And, you know, 15, uh, 15 months on the shelf. And she had uh, seizures, three seizures. No one knew why. They and she didn't, There was not even like a follow-up. She didn't even say if they know why now. I mean, for all we know, she could have another seizure. But she said, you know, she, she thought she might have to retire. But, damn it, she had a dream of becoming... She's telling this story, and they're chanting for the Oilers. And then Tony interrupts her story about like fighting for her life tony interrupts and the fans chart start chanting for tony and tony says all i hear is a charity case and they cheer and serena says you need to start taking this stuff seriously and she dropped an s bomb because that usually gets a pop she says you gotta start taking this s seriously the fans boo her she says i fight for my life i'll fight for my life at double or nothing the fans respond by chanting for Tony. Tony says she doesn't care. Doesn't give an S, she says. The crowd pops for that. They chant Tony's name again. And then uh, Serena she goes to leave. She checkmated her curse word. Tony grabs her. Serena drops her with the right hand, and she gets booze. I'm like... See, here's the thing, that guys. You don't get it. Like, I get mad at certain things, okay? But the stuff I get the most mad at is when... I told you this would happen. And it's not like I made a wild guess. It's I've watched every Tony Storm feud for the last five months or whatever. And the same thing happens every time. You get somebody who you put in the role of the baby face against Tony Storm, who for reasons unknown is still a heel... But she's the most popular woman on the roster, and every single time, it kills the babyface dead. Half the time, we get no heat, because they're like, they don't even care, because they just want to cheer. I said, this is going to happen, and here we are. Put it in a tweet earlier. Inaptitude. Not ineptitude, but inaptitude when it comes to putting some of this show together and coming up with ideas and some of the ideas that they come up with. I don't, I don't know who's to blame, but you already danced this dance with Deanna Perrazzo. And maybe you got an escape valve out of it because of Thunder Rosa and you were able to put those two together. But you send Serena Deeb out there, who you got to admit, did hold her own as far as holding it together through that promo and making it sound like she wasn't shook up by the crowd or anything. But man, to make this mistake again, like, what are you doing here? You know, I get it. The Jamie hater, I will assume, is going to come back as the Lord and Savior, as she should. But like, there's so much you could have done here with Tony Storm. I actually don't think that's going to happen. Then what are you doing? I'll, t I'll tell you. You want to know I, what I think is going on? Go ahead. And I'm going to give my constructive criticism, okay? Do you remember when we would watch Raw, and every last single week, like every storyline would just go out the window, and he would just do something else? Yes. And there was absolutely, positively zero long-term booking. 
It was week to week. Whatever happened, like what? And it was just, it was mind blowingly irritating. And all people asked for was, can we have some long term storytelling? Remember this? Yeah. Well, AEW starts, and and they do long term storytelling. You know, they they book quite a ways out and everything like that. Okay. So there's there's uh, there are always two extremes, and then there's there's the middle. And the thing that if I were to give Tony Khan one piece of advice, it would be, I don't care what your long term plan is. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you've got to do something different. And mm-hmm. when I watched this show, what happened later was Mariah May faced Harley Cameron. Mariah May is, uh, you know, Tony's understudy or whatever they call her. And uh, she works a total baby face. And Harley's a heel. Mariah sells, makes her big comeback, wins, place goes nuts. They bring out Mina Shirakawa. They hug. They almost kiss, but then they drink some champagne. And they, they happily, and everyone's there dancing. Everybody's going, they love them, okay? And as soon as this happened, I knew exactly where this is all going and where it's been going from day one. And that is Mariah and Tony are going to split, probably as a result of Mina Shirakawa or whatever. And Mariah May, as a babyface, is beating Tony Storm for the title at Wembley. That's where we're going, okay? Now, I'm sure at some point Tony came up with this idea, probably months and months ago. And as is always the case, he is going to barrel forward with his plan come hell or high water. And the hell or high water is nobody wants to boo Tony Storm. They just don't. And he's doing everything he can to get Mariah May over. She's going to be the baby face in this scenario. And, uh, and, it, that's just Brian, where we're going to go. All, everything you said would be fine, except for the fact that you need to give people a reason to boo Tony Storm. And one of those things leading into a show in August would be this baby face Tony Storm, who we love this gimmick of, does something to Mariah May and then turns on her leading into Wembley because that's what a booker would do. And I look, I, I don't. They can do whatever they want. It really doesn't matter either way to me. You know, I'm going to be here with you every day talking about it anyway. But it's one of those times where it's like all of the great bookers in history listen to the crowd, understand business. Yes, they have their idea. And you tell the fans what you want and you manipulate the fans. That's part of being a promoter. That's part of being a, a... you know, psychologist and a sociologist when it comes to your fan base. But you also have to accept what comes in and then make that work for you. And you need to leave yourself wiggle room. You can't just say, I have a long-term plan and come hell or high water, go and do it. Because again, now we got a situation like this where in the process, you're leaving bodies in the wake. And it doesn't really make any sense. What's the point? You could have done this with a lot of people other than Serena Deeb or Deanna Perrazzo, who's coming in brand new. It's like you could have literally done that with anybody, gotten the same results. Now, I will tell you a couple of highlights from this show. There were some. So, Samoa Joe, by the way. Yeah, well, that's, well, that's one, of the, one of the highlights of this show is they, have, uh, they haven't gone full into it, but like we're getting more video packages and we had some excellent ones on this show i listen there are very few people that are more critical of this whole house of black thing than me i hate house rules i hate spooky stuff it's so lame but they had a video remember when adam copeland didn't want to do that with judgment yeah isn't that ironic (laughs) yeah do you guys remember this if you don't remember this so Edge was the guy, he was going to be the head of, of Judgment Day. It was going to be his group. And they put him together for a while. And he apparently said, like, I will not be involved in any of this spookiness. I will not do it. I want out. Have somebody else take my spot. So they removed him from the Judgment Day because he didn't want to be involved in, in spookiness or goofiness. And then Judgment Day never did that. They just became a heel group. And now he's here with Malachi Black, and he got sprayed in the eyes with mist, and it's making him mean. So that's ironic. But anyway, they had a Malachi Black promo, and uh, 
and Malachi, this was probably one of his best promos ever in AEW because it wasn't speaking in riddles. It was just flat out laying out the story, which is this Adam Copeland, he's acting like a nice guy, but I know this guy, and he's not a nice guy. And I am going to do whatever needs to be done to bring that side of Adam Copeland out to show you people that he is not the nice guy that you think he is. And Malachi is attempting to recruit him for the House of Black. That's the storyline. It was a going great into a pool of fire. It was a great video package. It looked great. It was shot great. The promo was great. It was awesome. It was awesome. Fact. We had uh, a Samoa Joe training video. So, like, we haven't even heard any of Samoa Joe's thoughts on losing the AW World Heavyweight title. That is a negative. Like, he doesn't seem to care. He's just training. But this training video, it was like, this guy's awesome. Yeah. Can he win the title back at some point? Because uh-huh. hopefully we've not seen the end of Samoa Joe as the world champion. He was fabulous in here. That's one thing that you have to give him credit for, and that's one a good booker does, is keep people fresh in the mix as far as keeping them important. And he went out and he killed Isaiah Cassidy. Then you have a promo like that, a video pack of Flair and Tenru playing on the screen behind him. It made him, it keeps him in the forefront, even if he's not having matches, because we see him with Hobbs and Wardlow and a lot of other people there. Once they're out of sight, out of mind, after their deal's over with, they just completely disappear. That's got to change. And then just to just to jab you before the show ends. Yeah. Chris Jericho is the learning tree. Oh, I thought you were going to say Jay White. I am dying. Uh, so Jericho's learning tree gimmick is to take all of the criticism that he gets online and it is now part of his character. To regurgitate it back out through his so face. So he's body. out there saying, "Man, guys, I wish I could be on every dynamite all 2 hours." Just two hours straight. I'd do it if I could, he says. He notes, I had a great match last week. I want to thank Shibata. We had the highest rating on cage match. He counted the chops. Which, of course, is a reference to the fact that people go, Oh, we hate Jericho and he sucks. He can't even have a good match anymore. Well, he went on cage match and found out that it was the highest rated match on that. So he, like, that's part of his character now. Dork. And uh, and then uh, he's thanking, oh, thank you, Hook. He goes, uh, yo, we haven't seen you since you hit yourself with that baseball bat. But take as much time as you need to get better, and then we'll we'll celebrate. And then Tony Schiavone gets in the ring, and he says, you know, since you mentioned Hook, he's going to be back next Wednesday night, right here on Dynamite. And Jericho pauses, and he goes, all right, well, let's celebrate on Dynamite together. Thanks, guys. And he gets out of there. I love it. I you do. love this character. And they no. faced a team with Harlan Abbott and Mo Jabari. <laughs> and you know the gimmick. Jericho was Captain Lou. He stood on the apron. Big Bill did all the work. And then Bill tags him in to make the cover and get the pin. He looks like Captain Lou. Oh, now we're going too far. <laughs> Back in a moment, Observer Live. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button and you'll never miss a video again.